Hey guys, how's it going? So this is the the start of the advanced uh, DeepFace Lab tutorial video that some people have been requesting and that I said I would make. And so I am a man of my word. I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over some various steps here. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of complicated, but it, th this video assumes that you know how to use DeepFace Lab, that you've probably done it a few, you know, at least a few times. You've made your own models. Uh, you know how to make a face set. You know how to get a whole, you know, to get access to DeepFace Lab. Uh, you have some requisite knowledge. If you don't have those things, please refer to the original DeepFace Lab tutorial that I already made, oh, I don't know, four or five months ago, and go over the basics because this will not make sense to you if you don't do that. But stick around here and in just a second we'll get started. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks. All right, so you probably noticed this big notepad document I've kind of written up here, and I'm going to kind of go through some steps with you guys, but then, of course, we're going to actually do the things that are listed here, more or less. So just uh, to kind of recap again, um, because we're going to be doing fairly high-dimension models, you need a lot of VRAM. So I apologize if this is useless to people who have cards really under 12 gigabytes. You're probably not going to be able to do this. Um, I don't know for sure, but pretty reasonably certain because I tried with an RTX 3070 when I first got into doing like the DeepFace Live stuff and 8 gigabytes was not enough to train even a 224 resolution uh, RTT, which is ready to train is what that stands for, um, RTT model which is what, uh, you know, that's for the pretty much the lowest. You, you can do lower resolution, so if you want to try 8 gigs with like a 192 resolution model and maybe shut off Ada Belief Optimizer, you might be able to have enough VRAM to, to do an okay live mile. So follow along, that may work for you, but like I say, because of the high dimensions um, and it's a VRAM hog, I really recommend, and I don't know how fast it would be, but they do make a 12 gig version of the RTX 2060, but probably a 3060 is like the minimum card you should be trying to do this with. Uh, 3080, there's a 12 gig version of that. The 10 gig version is probably still not enough VRAM. It's pr I'm pretty sure you could do the, tw the 224 with it, um, but even then that's kind of iffy. But to do like a 320 res or higher, and I'm gonna do a 320 res in this video, uh, you, you want a lot of VRAM, like I'm doing with, you know, obviously I'm using 3090s, 3090Ti, and my RTX A6000, which is way overkill for 320, but just, uh, again, you're going to need lots of VRAM, so I apologize if this is inconvenient to people, this is a set of steps that will help some people, it will be less helpful to other people. You could probably apply this, though, um, and still actually, like, in fact, I'm sure you could apply it, uh, to, to pretty much any situation if you want to do like a lower res mo model of your own and then just keep kind of folding that into new models because that's what we're going to go over here is a we're going to go over like how to more quickly train a model instead of like starting from scratch we're going to get like a big pre-training bonus out of using certain files from the rtt model and then we're going to also go over how to roll your existing model into the next model so you don't have to start all over again and you can make new add new source characters at any given time and it will quickly learn them and you'll be up and running in like a day or two with a fairly i don't want to say like complete model gan is the problem like we'll get to that but like for those of you again who have been who are familiar with deepface lab you know that gan can take a long time for some reason sometimes it still takes days for gan to finish which sucks even if you've already got GAN files in there that I've used before and it's picking them up, it just seems like if you changed much of anything, like the destination's changed, or you've added more source material, or like, you know, uh, you've changed the source, GAN sometimes will quickly finish, but it just seems like it usually still takes too long, so or a while. So, uh, anyways, back to the task at hand. So you want a lot of VRAM. Uh, required software you're going to need is, of course, DeepFace Lab. You're going to need the RTM face set. Now, there's new, uh, for those of you who don't know, like uh, I think it was the 18th that Iperov put up a new version of the RTM face set and the RTT model. 
Uh, so you can still get the original ones. I'll have all I have all the links you can see uh, on screen right now. There's links to everything, and I'll put those in the description so you can get either the uh, version one or version two. The difference, to my understanding, is that when you use DeepFace Live and you blink, the model tends to morph slightly. So, like you blink, and the model kind of seems to slightly contract inward and then pops back out again. And so if you've watched enough deep face live you'll you, you probably can notice it where again it just kind of causes like a slight flicker or a defamation in the whole face every time the person blinks um apparently he's come up with a solution to fix that he created this secondary set of uh the, again this rtt model which is a pre-trained mo set of model files that's been pre-trained to 10 million iterations and so that's why when you use these encoder files that we're going to go over it will expedite the training of your model quite a bit um if anybody in here has tried making their own live models using the rtt model already then you know it's quite fast but what this lets you do is you can apply uh the encoder and the decoder from the rtt files to any model as long as it uses the same dimensions and you can get that 10 million pre-trade bonus on a 320 res model i've done it on 448 i've done it on 512 and they all get the same benefit from it like the, it vastly like within 10,000 iterations the model already is getting pretty good definition so if that should tell you anything it's way faster uh than not using a heavily pre-trained model uh, i didn't the last deep face lab um video i did you know the, the original tutorial i didn't really understand fully uh the benefits of pre-training but a heavily pre-trained model is, is awesome. It will super uh, super speed your, your training compared to not doing it at all. I used to do like 100,000 iterations and thought I was doing something. It's like, no. Um, I don't know how he's doing 10 million on these, like what hardware he has or how long that takes, but it must be uh, a lot, a long time. So anyways, uh, RTT encoder, he, he or model, he made again like this newer one and there's a new version of the RTM face set, and there's a different methodology to training it, which I can get the instructions for that and link them uh, in the description if you guys want to screw with that. I'm sticking with the original RTT right now because that's what I've used to make my models because I made them before he made the new ones. So uh, you can use the RTM one or two face set to train against. That won't hurt anything. The original had like 68,000 faces in it. The new one has like 98,000 faces in it. It just gives you more diverse uh, stuff to train against. It'll just learn more, which is good. That's why I've like a, actually I've kind of gone back and trained mine that I had trained against the first version, against the second version now, and now they are, they've benefited from it. So it's noticeable. Um, but again, something to do with the training methodology, like you don't use eye focus on these uh these v2 rtt ones and apparently that helps with that whole deep face live facial deformation when it blinks so it's like a you know it, it makes more um that's what i'm looking for it makes it more realistic it uh, kind of breaks the uncanny valley a little bit when you see a face kind of morph a little bit when the guy blinks so that's why he did all that he put a lot of work into it to, to fix blinking so um those are available again i've got the links to all that stuff in here uh, next thing is there is a set of 13 million iteration trained XSEG model files, which I will supply the link to. That's on Google Drive. It's not my Google Drive, but whoever's hosting them, thanks to them. Um, that will pretty much instantly train a face for the XSEG mask. So what you'll do is you'll just uh, generic XSEG apply to your source or your destination. And if you're training against the RTM, you don't even need to, to do it for the RTM face set. That's already x -segged. You don't ever need to unpack that or anything. But for your source face set, uh, you know, apply like generic x -seg source, train with the x -seg 13 million iteration uh, mo model files, and it's done in like a minute. It's ridiculous. Uh, now, sometimes it takes a little longer than that if you have, again, like a bunch of facial uh, obstructions and whatnot. And occasionally you may have to manually exeg some things because like there's like a something big in front of the guy's face and like it doesn't do a good job. Sometimes it'll get like the upper half and kind of F up the bottom half because it uh, generic isn't perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, and if you don't have any obstructions in front of any of the faces, which for your source, you really shouldn't anyway, should be fine. Um, and it will it will train like that it will kind of hang when it loads because it's such a high iteration count i think they're kind of large files it takes it kind of a second it'll hang for 
five, 10 seconds, you might think it froze up, but just give it a second and it will unscrew itself and you'll see like instant gains. So got links for that. So that's another big time saver. Before you had to train XSEG for potentially for hours. Now you have to train it for about a minute. So good there. Uh, other thing that's nice to have, um, as I mentioned before in one of my community posts, J Downloader. I don't know if they fixed it yet or not, but it was having an issue where like it was capping your speed uh, for downloading videos to like 64 kilobits per second, uh, kilobytes per second probably, uh, from YouTube. And they said, you know, YouTube had changed something, so they had to update their, their software. But there's that. But I also have a packet I picked up called uh, 4K Video Downloader. Uh, it's like 15 bucks for a lifetime uh, license, and you can use it up on on up to three PCs. Uh, 10 bucks to get you like a year access to it. I thought $15 was worth it for the lifetime access. So you get that. You paste links to videos you want to get off of YouTube for source material or destination material. I know that like best practice is to use like ripped Blu-rays and things of super high definition um, for source material. But I have found lately, like for, for example, with the Mary uh, Elizabeth Winstead model, that was almost exclusively pulled off YouTube with, uh, I did I did rip the Blu-ray from the movie The Thing, uh, but that was it. Everything else was from YouTube and uh, I mean, there's like interviews and stuff on there of people that's like 4K and a lot of it's really excellent quality. So what I like to do is you can see here, I've got all these videos in a playlist that I've made on YouTube. So like as I'm kind of going through my day, I will occasionally do a search for Anne Hathaway interview 4K or, you know, try to find some of the movies that she's been in and find clips of those and kind of evaluate their quality and decide if I think that they look like they're sharp enough. You can, you know, in two seconds, look at it and say, okay, that looks good or that looks like crap. And so as you, you can see, I've got this large list of Anne Hathaway, uh, you know, little video clips. Some are just like a minute. Some of them are substantially longer than that. And I take all these links and I throw them into the video downloader software. It pulls down all those videos. Uh, you can preset it in this case. So I have it set to MPEG-4, best quality, uh, because some of them are in like what's called a WebM format. And a lot of them are in MKV format. And I use Adobe Premiere Pro. And for some reason, it is incompatible with those formats. I really wish Adobe would get off there and support a bunch more formats because it's really annoying having to convert stuff the other option is to download them um if there's a better ver like a better quality version of that video on there um not available in mp4 but available in like w you know again webm or something uh you can always change the format with handbrake which i've done many times they make it an mpeg4 anyway and it just takes more time so uh anyways you download you know that's a good way to get source. That's how I get a lot of mine is from these interviews. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to load any of this stuff up while we're on here because I don't want to get a copyright strike and I don't know what is or what is not. Uh, and when I say strike, I mean, I just don't want the video to get demonetized because this is a lot of work I'm going to put into this. I don't want them to, to take away any little bit of ad revenue I get off of it. But like this one, for example, which again, I'm not going to load up on here, but this one is really high quality. Like you can kind of even see from the thumbnail, how sharp her face appears to be. Um, a lot of these are good. Interstellar, there was you know a lot of footage of her in that. So anyways, that's going to be my next thing that I'm going to do is work on uh, downloading all that stuff and creating a face set, which ultimately that takes, depending on how big it is, it's usually like a three or a four hour, but most of that's just waiting for it to extract faces uh, and then like also editing it down. So I'll take all those clips. Like I said, I'll throw them in Adobe Premiere and I'll just cut out the portions that don't have Anne Hathaway in it, uh, which takes a while to go through, I'll sift through that stuff and find use useful facial expressions where she's doing, ah, you know, like she's got to be looking around and looking a lot of side profile stuff, all that kind of stuff you got to look for. And she's looking down, she's looking up, you know, she's making googly eyes and funny. The, the crazier the facial expressions, I find the better and a lot of those oddly enough um seem to come from like uh late night shows like with david letterman or jimmy kimmel those kind of guys it seems like uh whenever someone is being being interviewed by one of these comedians um like there's a lot of giggling and laughing going on but you know she'll be tossing her head around oh you know that kind of stuff i, I make funny noises but you know she's 
they're having just a good conversation between the two people. And I find that people act more naturally um, in interviews and other things like that on YouTube. Or like, you know, when they're at the red carpet or something like that, at like some Hollywood affair, whatever it might be, they kind of act more normal than they do in a movie. Like they're not acting, they're just talking to somebody. So, they, you know, there's facial expressions that you can get from that. So, uh, other information. So basically, I'll go through this list of steps with you guys. And then, like I said, I'll actually make the face set and I'll show you how to apply all this stuff. This is just me kind of going over a set of steps. So, like, step one, you're going to extract and install Deep Face Lab, of course. You're going to create your own face set as we just went over, uh, you know, from whatever celebrity you want to use. Again, we're using in Hathaway for the sake of this video, but any character will do, um, as long as you have a nice, diverse set of images for that person. Um, my Mary Elizabeth Winstead model is like 70,000 images. That's the craziest, biggest one I've ever done. But like really like eight to 15,000 images is really quite good. It just depends on, again, if you can cover all the angles with a smaller number of images, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to get things like lighting conditions. I'm trying to get subtle stuff like firelight. Um, it's just things like that help, uh, depending on what you're going to import it into. And that aliens clip I'm trying to do, uh, requires a lot of that stuff. She's in flamethrower. So you gotta get firelight. So anyways, uh, so you make your celebrity face set, uh, then you create your model at any resolution that you want. So like I said, uh, in my case, we'll do 320. The standard for the RTT model has been 224. But you could do this at 192, you could do this at 384. Any resolution that you can support with your card that you want to play with, go ahead and do it. Um, I will say as a caveat, the reason I've been doing 320s uh, is because it's about the best you can do in Deep Face Live and not completely overwhelm your hardware because the hardware uh, kind of chugs even at the 320. 224, you get a good frame rate. Now when the RTX like 4090s come out, you know, who knows how much faster, uh, better frame rates you can get. But currently, like I say, 320, anything above that, I don't think you'd be able to use it. Like 384, it would just chug. It kind of chugs at 320. So, and, But 320 has been looking good in video, so I was kind of trying to find a balance there. But anyways, uh, so make your model, any resolution you want, and you need to use the following uh, dimensions. So the autoencoder dimensions are 512. Uh, I don't know what E-DIMS stands for, but the E-DIMS are 64, the D-DIMS... R64 and the demask dims with 32. Those are what are by default used by the RTT model. So we need to mimic that in our whatever model that we create. You're going to uh, briefly begin training your SAEHD model, starting with random warp on LRD. Uh, and again, some people leave LRD on, but this is how I do it. You can do what you want. If you've got a different training methodology, have at it. Um, most of this is just about getting certain settings right. So um, anyways, I start training with random warp on, learning rate dropout off, and of course, GAN off, clip gradient on, uh, and the batch, whatever you can support with, however much VRAM you have. Eight's fine, uh, 12 is a nice number, 16, whatever you can kind of afford based on your, your VRAM allotment and how high your resolution is on your model, etc. So you just train it for like a minute, minute and a half, doesn't even have to go that long and then save it uh, after again, after a few iterations. So you just save the model. Then what you do. So again, I've got kind of some of this stuff staged here so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So let me see here. Talk on it. Sorry. Put that down and and Hathaway. So like, let's say I had started training this model and I just got it started, you would have, you know, a certain number of these files in here, and you'd have all this stuff, but you wouldn't have the GAN files, but everything else would be in here. From the RTT models, files, where the heck are those? There it is. Okay, sorry. Here's the RTT model files. You would take the auto -enco the encoder and the decoder files, just these two. You would copy these and paste them and overwrite the new ones you just made with your new model. So again, in Hathaway here, I would start training for a couple seconds and save it. It would create this section of model files down to here is, so it would start here and end here, but no GAN files it wouldn't have. And you would then paste from the RTT model files that you downloaded and overwrite just the decoder and encoder files into that folder. 
containing your Anne Hathaway model, or again, whoever you're doing. That replaces, uh, that allows it to basically gain the pre-training bonus of 10 million iterations. So it starts off thinking that it's already been pre-trained 10 million times, even though this is from a 224 res model, which you can see here, it doesn't matter. You can use it on any resolution. So that's trick number one to get you training much faster from the get-go than you normally would be able to do. So you've done that, and then you can resume training. And when you start it up, which again, I'll show you guys this stuff, is I'll do like a demo of it, and then I'll kill it and show you kind of like what it looks like when it's finalized. But you, um, so you resume your training, right? And you'll notice it's like um, some of the training windows will like be scrambled for like half a second. That's kind of how you know it worked. And then the next few iterations, it'll like immediately start picking up. And like I say, within even a couple thousand iterations, you'll see like formation of your character's face starting to take take shape and whatnot so that's speedy speedy training number one um so then you just train the rtm model kind of using the same methodology that we've been using again in the past um like the deep face live model for example uh that that tutorial video kind of went over training a D, uh, an rtm model to you to make your own deep face live model this is the same process so you start with random warp then random warp plus learning rate dropout then just learning rate dropout then learning rate dropout plus gan until it's done uh at that point when when that's finished which you know maybe it's a million iterations maybe it's one and a half maybe it's two million iterations however much patience you want to exert you can export at that point and make a df live model out of it so you've kind of completed it in the sense that you've made a deep face live model but if you want to make another model going forward that's where we're going to talk about rolling uh files over so you can use them again and quickly create a new source character using all the same files except for one so stand on one second and i'm going to go into that all right so the next step here we're going to talk about is how to basically reuse all of your existing model files to create a brand new model with a different source character. So like I say, right now I'm doing in Hathaway. Let's say the next day I wanted to do uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Brad Pitt or whoever the heck it is that you want to use. No problem. So you create the new a new set of Deep Face Lab folders. Like I made one here for Anne Hathaway. Like I said, this wasn't here a minute ago. I just copied all this stuff over from my um, one of my other ones, like, like Jim Varney, right? Um, so copy over the internal and all the batch files, create a new workspace folder, and create all your own new uh, destination source and model folders as usual, right? So you create like a new set of files. Uh, next thing you do is, let's see, create your new face set for your new celebrity. Again, in my case, Anne Hathaway, but whatever. Uh, place the new face set pack file. So like once you've, you're done making your new face set, put it where you always put it, which is uh, data source. What, what did I say? Yeah, data source aligned. As normal, then if you want to train against the RTM face set again, which you can, or whatever DSD clip you want to do, you would, you know, put those in the destination slash align folder. This is pretty standard stuff for people who have Deep Face Lab experience, like I said, but just to kind of reiterate, you know, whatever destination you want to train against, put that in your destination align folder. Uh, the next thing you do, so right, we're going to copy over everything but one file. So... I'm going to go ahead and do that now, actually, just to show you guys what I'm doing. So I will take all the files from Jim Varney, and I'm going to copy over the XSIG files, too, because I already got, these should be the ones, yeah, see, this is the crazy 13 million iteration XSIG files. I'm going to go ahead and copy over everything except for the inter AB file. I'm going to paste that into Anne Hathaway. Done deal, which was pretty fast, actually. Uh, the reason we're doing that, and I'm not like a Python wizard, so, you know, if I explain this wrong and someone wants to correct me, uh, I'm sure, like, Iparov would have better knowledge of this, or, like, a lot of the guys in the Deep Face Live and Slash Lab Discord server probably understand this better than I do, of why it works the way that it works. But to my understanding, so, the inner AB, this is, like, inner stands for interpolation. The interpolation AB file... Uh, is basically like the record of it learning the source and how the source relates to the destination. The inter interpolation B file is just its learning method, knowledge of destination stuff, faces, right? So if you keep the B, but drop the A to B, 
it forgets your source character, in this case, Jim Varney, and it will generate a new one of those once we start training uh, our new source, which in this case will be Anne Hathaway, but it retains all the destination knowledge you never had. So it retains all that training you did against the RTM face set. So you've taught it presumably either 68,000 or 98,000 faces, depending on if you use version one or two. And so it knows a boatload of people because it already knows so much stuff for the destination stuff. Um, if you give it like a video clip to play with and don't train against the RTM face set again, um, it will almost instantly know that destination clip. Like it'll be pretty well learned right off the bat. You can go look at it and you'll be able to see fairly good definition on all those destination images, like I say, within a few iterations. The source character will learn faster also, A, because you've already trained one up before and it just basically has to, it just thinks that you've deleted it to, when you delete the interpolation file normally, the enter A, B, um, it helps preserve source likeness and you can redo that a bunch of times and the more you delete that file, like every 100,000 iterations, um, it will learn the re relearn the source character faster. So without it, it will relearn the source character quickly, especially considering the model has like a couple million iterations on it at that point. Like mine has, this one I'm doing is a little over 2 million right now that I've been screwing around with. Again, this is a 320, etc., etc., as we've discussed. But because mine has got a lot of training on it, um, and the interpolation file B has been trained heavily and knows a boatload of things, um, it doesn't take it long to learn the destination, at which point it kind of, again, this is kind of how I understand it. Um, I can't remember, the, it, I can't pronounce his name. It's like, Ayuyui is the guy I linked in my, I'll get his channel linked for this, but I linked him in the, the other day in the, um, the community post. But the guy that kind of explains some of the, some of this to me is because it knows the destination, it doesn't have to devote much time or resources to that, and it can spend that time learning the source. So it learns the source faster. So it's already learning faster because it's had, uh, you know, the 10 million pre million uh, training bonus originally. It's learning faster because we've deleted the interpolation file and forced it to relearn, which will pick it up quicker. And it's learning faster because we've kept our well-trained inner B file which knows the RTM face set and whatever else you may have trained it against. So this one in particular, I've used this set of model files now for like, let's just say like five, six different models that I've been screwing around with. So it learned a bunch of sources, which again, it loses with the inner AB, but it's learned all the different destinations I wanted to train those models against. So it has quite the library of knowledge of different faces, lighting conditions, all the, the usual goodies. So keeping the inner B file is key, but dropping the inner AB file is where we where we want to do that. So once you've pasted that over, you start training, like say against the RTM or a destination clip of your choice, and you'll notice that it's almost immediately learned the destination, or very well depending on how far you trained your original RTM model. So if you only trained it for like 800,000, it's not going to be as fast as if you trained it to like a million and a half. Get the idea. Uh, and your new source character will be learned substantially faster than before, which was already faster than normal because we use the RTT encoder decoder as I just explained, and Rinse, lather, repeat. You can do this unlimited times, and it only gets better and better every time you do it because it just learns and learns. This is a brain. This is a neural network. We're, tr we're training and teaching new things, and the more we teach it, the faster it learns new stuff after that. So that is a long-winded explanation of what I've been doing lately on how to more rapidly train models. I will include this lovely little documentation here probably in the description or something. It won't, it's not going to fit in a, in a pinned post, I don't think. And I got to do my timeline on that. So uh, I'm going to cut out here while I work on my Anne Hathaway face set, which is going to take me a while. I'll probably let that start extracting here before I go to bed. And like I said, when I get up, I can probably start training it in the morning. But like I said, we've already copied over our, our model files into Hathaway here. I can kind of rehash that again when I actually start training. Uh, the source doesn't have anything right now because I haven't made that yet and the destination doesn't have anything But I'll probably just put in my RTM face set, which I have to figure out where I've got one of those saved I downloaded it. That's right. I've got uh, so Like I've got my RTM file right here. I'll copy that and slap that in there All right So we've got our destination to train against pretty good sized 
for, for an archive file, it's pretty large. But we've got our destination file, we've got our model files, uh, we've got our basic folder structure here. The last thing I need to do is make my source character for Anne Hathaway, which I will begin doing right now. I will see you guys in the morning when it is ready to start. Alrighty, it is the following morning, and I'm going to go through real quick here. I've got uh, 39,012 images after I went through and deleted out any bad alignments or things with facial obstructions, but just give you a demo of like the kind of footage we're talking about that I'm getting from interviews. This is like red carpet kind of stuff. You can see, you know, pretty good detail on the mouth. The eyes are pretty sharp and well-defined hair and stuff. You know, not that we need the hair, but just saying like, Another thing I don't like about um, doing uh, deep fix of women sometimes is the longer hair, they often cover up like an eyebrow or something. I have quite a bit of footage here where it's not like that. Like she's, I think this is either Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel, but she's on, you know, a different Tonight Show type interview situation. So you can see all kinds of different angles and she's got kind of different facial expression. She talks a lot with her hands, apparently, so she's doing this stuff a lot and being expressive and giggly and that kind of thing. And so, like I say, you get kind of funny stuff like this. <laughs> Some of them aren't as sharp as others, but like I say, most of it is, is pretty high quality. This is from an interview she did for Interstellar, and that's pretty good quality stuff there. And it'll sharpen up a little bit beyond the source image, even with a GAN. So... Just a uh, different interview she did. Like I say, some of it is directly from the movie Interstellar. Um... Just that kind of stuff, you know, interviews and whatnot. So what I'll do now, again, I know this is like rehash for people who know how to make a face set, but uh, I will go ahead and apply my generic XSEG to the source. And that's going to take a little while because 40,000 images takes a while to apply anything to, unfortunately. It takes a real long time to do 70,000 images. So we'll go ahead and tell it to run on the A6000. And I will be back when that finishes. I'm suspecting that that'll take probably, yeah, like 20 minutes or something like that. Okay. All right, I'll be back when that's done. Okay, we've finished applying our generic, well, uh, add, yeah, the generic source XSEG. So next thing I'll go ahead and do is train XSEG. But first of all, uh, because the destination is the RTM face set, we don't want to XSEG train that. It's already done, and it would be a waste of time to load it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just rename that folder for the time being. I'll change it back when I'm ready to start training the model. But I'll go ahead and this way it won't draw the destination uh, images into the XSEG training. Like I said, that just takes longer and takes longer to load. So we'll go ahead and load this up. Now this is that 13 million iteration uh, XSEG model files which should train this very quickly it's going to take it a second to load all this up though because again it's a lot of images so i will be back when it finishes loading that up all right it is just now loading up so it'll hang a little bit and like see see it kind of went up to like nine seconds there for a second like it hung but give it a second here and the training window should populate there it is as you can see, this has just been trained to bejesus. I didn't do this personally. I wish I could take credit for it, but um, one of the guys on the Discord server, I don't know where he got it from exactly, but it was made available publicly through his Google Drive. Now you can see it's ostensibly already done. Now this, um, uh, I'm going to see if it picks up and covers up that hair, for example. It's not flawless sometimes when you use generic. Like, see, it's picking up that girl's face in the background for some reason. So, you know, sometimes you might have to go through and do a little bit of manual exegging. But, like I say, you can look at the loss graph up here, and it's immediately, like it spiked for a second, and it started to drop off, which indicates that it's already ostensibly learned what it's going to learn. Uh, see, look how well it did the hair. Like, somehow it kept the eyebrow. <laughs> it kept the eyebrows, but it got rid of the bangs. Like, it's that smart. So, I'll let this go for, like like two minutes basically sometimes i let it go a little bit longer like i say just because it's a fairly large number of images and because again like any kind of hair obstruction uh is sometimes a problem 
with women with long bangs or when their hair is framed around the face like sometimes it'll include some of the hair and you want to wait till it hopefully figures out to exclude it without your manual intervention that's the problem with these large face sets is it takes so long to load them up it's kind of a pain in the neck to have to manually do anything because then it's like you're waiting to load it and waiting for it to train and then see if it fixed it and then waiting to load it and etc etc and applying the exeg mask even still takes like again it'll take probably about the same amount of time so 15 20 minutes just to apply this when this is done so anyways i'll let this go for a few minutes and i'll be back in a sec all right it's been going for a few more minutes you can see how well it's immediately taking care of the hair but again like it's retaining the eyebrow which is really good because uh like it'll kind of meld all the side profiles together into some kind of an amalgamation of one another and so even though this is covered up here and we don't have this portion of the face i have enough other samples that it'll fill in for it so it should have no problem uh even though like i say the hair is blocking it here so looking pretty good looking well uh, i think there was something obstructing her yeah her hand was up on, on her face there again she gets to talking with her hands and they kind of do this stuff a lot i had to delete a fair number of uh images manually because of the her hand was an obstruction Alrighty, i think that's sufficient that was about five minutes so i'll go ahead and apply that or basically hit save to or enter sorry to save and close that out i'm tired i went to bed late last night guys uh had that flood i mentioned in my community post this kind of has been trouble wish i had a bunch of money and i could just just dump this place and move although that'd be a pain in the ass anyways <laughs> all right so that's done i will go ahead and apply so data source trained apply and again like i said this will probably take just as long as it did to apply the generic it might be a little faster i don't know we'll see uh nope pretty much exact same time frame so i'll be back when it's done all righty that is finished applying our xa trained information so i'll go ahead and kill that so i could just pack it like it is or i can go ahead and sort it i like to sort sometimes it doesn't take that long to do that with uh with thread ripper so i'll go ahead and do a sort and i'm gonna tell a sort by face yaw direction so that'll start like with the person facing to the left and they'll gradually turn their face and by the end they'll be facing the right at the bottom of the assorted images that's how i do those um those videos when i do like an image sequence and you see like the person uh like the face set and you see the person's face kind of blah, 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 like quickly kind of changing facial expressions uh like i did with like kate blanchett and i did one with um oh i'm drawing a blank but whatever anyways um yeah that's how i do those is i i sort them this way and then I import them into Adobe Premiere Pro as an image sequence, and it turns that into an MPEG-4, and then you just upload that basically with some music. And so anyways, you can see this will still take a few minutes, but it's not as long as uh, as doing x -segging. So I'll go ahead and let that sort, and then I'll show you guys what that looks like, and then I'll, make a, uh, I'll pack it into a face set pack file, and then we'll go ahead and start training. Uh, it looks like according to the, the community post where I did the poll, uh, it's a slight edge, but it looks like people want me to start Anne Hathaway from scratch. So I can go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to take longer for this video to come out because as a result of that, I think it won't take, I don't know, probably like a week or something together. I mean, we can kind of just kind of go through the generalized idea of it and you can see sort of what the, what the idea is. And then I could probably maybe start another one using the method of... Um, of recycling model files so you can see how much faster it'll be from recycled model files from the jim varney model because again that's the one the same set of files i've been using for like patrick stewart stuff i've been playing with it's the one that i use from m m it's the same model files i've been using to make all these 320s so um i guess we'll train through this normally so you guys can see that process and then i will start a second one but we'll call that one the uh you know, like that, that that'll be done with the, the rehash model file so you can see like it's it's much faster to pick it up. 
So anyways, I'll be back in a minute when this finishes uh, sorting. Alrighty, our sorting has completed. So I'll go through here and you guys can take a look real quick at the alignments. You see it starts, she's facing left. And as we scroll, it'll slowly start turning towards the center. Very slowly, because we have a lot of images. <laughs> but you get the idea, kind of scroll through this and she's kind of gradually turning and I'll go further and now she's looking pretty much right at the camera. And a little further, she's starting to turn the other way. Etc. etc. You get you get the idea. And at the end, we've got her facing that direction. And when you do so when we train and we enable uh source flip, all these are seen as both directions. Even though physically we only have well physically but digitally we only have one copy of each image but in virtual memory it's going to have it flipped both directions to train both ways so even if you have maybe you don't have a massive number of the person looking in one direction if you source flip it considers it as them looking in both directions uh which effectively doubles the size of your face set so instead of thirty nine thousand, we have you know seventy eight thousand and uh 24 basically um now the stuff that's staring directly ahead, it being flipped doesn't really do anything other than uh, it's useful for like facial expressions. So if she's blinking in one, flip, she's blinking in the other. So, or appears to be. I thought that that would mess with like facial, uh, like moles and stuff, like birthmarks and so forth. But so far I've noticed that it, it seems like it figures that out. So it's a pretty smart system. All right, so we've, uh, we've gone ahead and sorted. Uh, now earlier, as I said, when I renamed this folder to DST1 so it wouldn't exeg train, it auto generates another empty destination folder. So I'm going to delete that back out and change the name of this back to disk data DST. There we go. That still contains my RTM base set. All right. So next up here, I'm going to go ahead and pack that source base set into a packed file if I can find the bloody. Thing. Here it is. So data source utility face set pack. I would like to retain a pack file. This should be pretty quick, about a minute, because this is uh again CPU this, this computer, the Threadripper, some of these things it does substantially faster than either of my Intel systems, but the Intel systems have advantages too because they have higher core clock frequencies. So certain activities like merging that some of the color transfer modes like SOT are single core. Uh, so for those, like the 12900K is better. But for this, this is better. So momentarily here we can get get going. So it's asked me if I want to delete the original files. When you pack the files, it's just like putting something into a zip archive. You delete the original files. So all you have left in the data uh, source slash align folder is the face set pack file and you don't have a bunch of loose images. It will do that quite quickly. And that should leave us now. Data source. Well, now it still has all the loose images that I extracted from, and those I will probably delete at some point because they just take up a lot of a ton of drive space. But the alignment just has our face at pack file. So we've got to reiterate like I'm gonna delete some of this stuff because we're gonna start this as a, a fresh one, like you guys said you wanted me to do. Um, I've got all this backed up as Jim Varney anyway for later when I want to do it a different way. So I'll just delete that for now. We'll just keep our XSEG files. We're going to do a fresh, brand new 320 res and Hathaway for the sake of Deep Face Live slash recycling and whatnot. But our source folder has our face set pack as we saw. Destination has our face set pack. Uh, this is just a folder I made because I was saving all the different little video clips I downloaded from her. I could probably delete that any time as well. But, you know, later I might evaluate some more of it if I feel like I need uh, a little bit more source material. But I think 40,000 is probably sufficient. I think we got the angles pretty well covered, etc., etc. So next thing up on our list is we want to create the new model by starting training in SAEHD. What I'm going to do 
Hold on a second here. I gotta find. Apparently, I got that open twice. That's not it either. All right, I gotta find the appropriate model settings so we can have that up on screen. All right, so this is the model settings we want to use: resolution 320, full face, uh, <clears throat> architecture is LIAE UDT, DIMMs 512, 64, 64 by 32, mass training, yes. Now, if you're using, as I was saying, um, if you're using the RTT version 2 and the RTM model version 2, to my understanding, you want to shut iPrio off. The instructions are available um, on how he's doing it now. I don't have a real desire to screw with that yet. So, and I'm not using the second gen RTT model file, files. But supposedly, again, that helps prevent like that eye blink morphing problem we were talking about. But anyways, for my sake, I'm going to leave these as true because I may use this in a video clip. And I think for video clips, it's better to leave them on. So anyways, eye prio true, mouth prio true. Uh, uniform yaw is like, again, we've gone over this stuff before in different videos. But if you have enough side profiles, you can leave that off. Blur mask can be true or false to start. doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll have learning rate dropout off to start. We'll have random warp on all this other stuff. These are, um, I'm using a slightly different version of deep face lab. It's called the, the MVE fork. So some of these settings just ignore cause they're not going to be in the normal version of it, but we're, we're just using settings that the normal version offers. So don't worry about some of that stuff. We'll have GAN turned off batch to whatever we want it to be, whatever you can kind of use. I'm not using color transfer modes anymore. I'm not using background powers anymore. All those things add loss value and unless you feel like you really like sometimes you need them but usually you don't i found that you don't so i'll go ahead and start up from scratch i really just wanted to get the dims off of here so 512 64 64 32 what i'll go is what i'll do is go in here to that's not the right one that's varney sorry where the devil is it yeah all right and half the way we're going to start i say ehd training and like i say we're going to base our settings somewhat on this so it says there's no new save model found. Enter a new name. We're just going to leave it as new because the RTT model stuff is all named new and we're going to overwrite that encoder and decoder. So I'll just say new. Pick my GPU. Session name doesn't matter. Auto backup I don't really screw with, but you can if you want. I usually just back it up manually when I feel like it. Uh, I'll set that down to, to three maybe. Again, some of these options you probably won't have because this is the MVE fork. It's a different version of DeepFace Lab. But again, the stuff that you need will all be the same settings. Uh, no. Right, target duration is zero. That'll, that means it'll just train indefinitely. Don't worry about that. Source flip on. Destination flip I turn off when I do these because they're already a huge face set anyway. Uh, let's see. I'll leave it at eight. That's ignore that. Ignore that. Resolution 320. Full face, L I A E U D T. So we want 512 auto encoder dims, 64, 64, change this to 32. Mass training, yes. Eye prio, yes. Mouth prio, yes. Uh, to leave that off. Blur mask, I'll leave off to start with. Later you can turn it on or you can start now. It doesn't really change anything as far as I know in terms of training speed. Uh, model and optimizer on the GPU, yes. Ada belief, I will leave on. Learning rate dropout, I will leave off. Ignore that. Ignore that. Random warp on. Yes. HSV, I usually use 0 0.05. But again, you don't have to use that either. It's just an optional setting. It just kind of helps it uh, learn different lighting conditions, I guess, a little bit better. Random down sample. Uh, nope. Ignore. 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 These are options that are in the different version of the software. Most of them I found aren't ultra useful some of them are but i haven't really needed any of them I, i've fiddled with all of them and like they haven't really done anything that i felt really improved the model uh random shadows ignore that setting that's not in your version game power we don't start with leave that off background i'm not using anymore face style leave off background leave off uh, well again one of these is the dupe like there's a duplicate setting in the new ver in the version i'm using just ignore background power Power transfer off, random color off, gradient clipping on, pre-training off. All right. So it's going to start a new model. It's going to say, oh, you should pre-train, man. 
Don't worry, we will. Just not in the same way. So that's going to take a second, but like this is why we face that pack because you can see it loaded 39,000 images kind of instantaneously there. Whereas before it would be sitting there for about, yeah, and there's like the 98,900 or 803 from the RTM version 2 face set pack, and it's loading those pretty instantaneously as opposed to waiting, you know, several minutes. So it's going to start here in just a second with the training window. I'm getting a little thirsty. All right, so that comes up. You've got like your kind of gray side over here. And it's doing, you know, a little something, something. But it will take quite a while to really get any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of thing out of this. So basically it just started. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it and close it. It would take quite a while to start seeing any uh, real learning going on. So I'll kill that. So now that it's been saved, uh, let's see, Anne Hathaway. I need to go into her model folder. And then I'm going to go into our RTT model files that we downloaded, grabbing the decoder and encoder only, copy those and paste into our Anne Hathaway model folder. It will ask if you want to replace, you will replace. And they all have the same name, so it thinks that they're the files that it was supposed to be using. And I'm gonna go back until it starts training again. And when this starts, eh, gotta, all right. Just let it continue, because we've already got the settings established. But when this starts, it's going to have kind of like this image scramble where it was those gray squares before. Like it's the first um, window is like source compared to, to how well it knows the source. When it does this next time here, it will be like this scrambled images there instead of gray blocks. And then that's how you know it worked. And then you just let it continue. But it will learn substantially faster this way. And in just a few thousand image uh, iterations, we'll start to see... Pretty noticeable learning going on. Give this a second. As there's a scramble, as I mentioned, kind of looks funny. That's Varney's information. I'll close that out now. So again, it's only on like iteration 55. But you can see, instead of like that background that was kind of like a pinkish, reddish with just kind of blocky, barely defined anything, it's already defined her face to some degree to start with. You can see the eyes, you can see the mouth. It's picking it up kind of instantaneously. And I use that word kind of, you know, heavily, but... And the destination as well, it will learn pretty quickly too, because that pre-training is against this large set of images as well. And so, it, and it's been pre-trained 10 million times by Iparov, the developer of DeepFace Lab. So, also the developer of DeepFace Live, coincidentally. So I'll let this go until we're at a couple thousand iterations or something, and I'll show you guys just how rapid this progression is. But we're still going to have to let this go several days. Uh, you know, you figure however many iterations you can get per second. So this is two iterations a second. You know, however many that is in like a 24-hour period. But it'll probably do a couple hundred thousand iterations a day. And so like day one... You do random warp. Day two, you add in learning rate dropout. Day three, you shut off random warp. Day four, you turn on GAN and train GAN until GAN is done. And that takes however long that takes. Sometimes that's reasonably quick. Again, if you have a small face set, but we have a fairly large source face set and we have a very large destination face set with the RTM face set. So it's learning pretty quick. Alrighty, you get the idea. That's what we're doing. If anybody has questions on how to do these things, if I'm going too fast, um, you know, I'm going to try to define all these steps. I've got it all written out in a document. So it's like step by step should explain pretty well, coupled with the video. You should be able to figure it out. But if you have, and again, assuming you have a fair amount of experience with DeepFace Lab, because if you don't, 
Um, go back to do the previous tutorial video. This is strictly for people who have been doing this for a little while. But you can see it's just, there's already definition of things beginning to form. So I'll be back when it's had, you know, maybe 5,000 iterations or something after I take my lunch. And uh, we'll see what it's doing at that point. Stay tuned. So I know I said I'd be back at it for a couple thousand, but this is 562 iterations. You can see Anne Hathaway's face, like, it verbatim. Like, it's already being rendered out. That's not even, there's 600 iterations. The destinations are being learned. And all we did was replace some encoder files with a higher 10 million trained RTT encoder files. Baller. All right. <laughs> I just, I get geeked out by these things. All right, be back when it's out a few thousand. Alrighty, so this is, like I say, just shy of 11,000, well, just over 11,000 now. Uh, it's been going almost exactly an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes or so, because the first save point takes place 15 minutes. So let's just say an hour and 15 to do 11,000 iterations. So roughly 10,000 iterations an hour, so 24 hours in a day, that's 240,000. Roughly what I had said was about 200,000, I was a little bit off, but in that ballpark. You can see, again, you would not have even beginning to approach this kind of definition yet uh, if you hadn't, if we didn't use the pre-trained encoder and decoder from the RTT model. Now you can see here, it hasn't like properly fully learned facial her facial expressions yet. So even though here she's doing kind of this weird thing with her mouth, like this, huh? Uh, here she just sort of looks like, hey. Eh. Um, over time, it will more properly pick that stuff up but still and you can see the destination the rtm face set is already being learned pretty well now you might be tempted <laughs> at this point thinking to yourself wow it looks so good i could just totally start changing settings already uh you know no just let it go on random warp uh, again for like a couple hundred thousand anyway and then switch it up to the, the random warp pl plus the linear rate dropout, so on and so forth. But uh, pretty pleasant results for, like I say, a little over an hour. So just uh, thought I'd throw that little bit in there. We'll check on it again here probably later today or, or early tomorrow. So keep, I'll be back. Alrighty, it is now just shy of 6 p.m. on... What is it, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> well, they forgot what it is. Kitty, hold on. And we got Hathaway up to about, what is this, two, yeah, a little over 243,000 because this morning it wasn't quite at 200 yet. I figured I'd let it go just a little bit further. So you can see we've made pretty good progress. This is still just standard random warp. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'll hit enter to save and close that out. Cats yeah, grumpy at me for being gone all day, of course. So what am I doing? Go back in here. Get it. Which is taking its dear sweet time. And I'm gonna turn on learning rate dropout. Okay. Turn that on. I'm gonna leave random warp on. Everything else being left the same. Silly cat. What are you doing? Come on, come on. Here. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> he just wants attention. That's all he ever wants is attention. Who's in there? What's that? He's a pretty good boy. He gets bored, lonely by himself. He sleeps all day. Yes. He's sleepy. Alrighty. So we're not going to see a huge difference initially. It'll take it a little bit, but we'll start getting some pretty good sharpening going at this stage. Already looks pretty good, though, having only been in random warp. 
And uh, let's see, those are the destination images. Looks like it's learned those pretty well. And this is like the translated predicted image. Some of them are better than others, but there again, it's not been going that long, about a day. All right, so that's uh, progress at this point. I'll be back again about the same time tomorrow, and we'll shut off random warp probably at that point. And then the next day, we'll probably go turning on GAN. So you guys have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty, it is now 640, sorry, 654 p.m. on Thursday evening, August the 25th, 2022. So we've been running this uh, overnight again since yesterday, the last time I checked in. Now it is at 430, let's see, yeah, about 436,000 iterations. This is the source-to-source -source comparison. We've got the destination comparisons and then the destination predicted outcome. And you can kind of see what Anne will look like on these different people. So this is Anne. I don't actually know who that guy is. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Vin Diesel seems to be a good choice for Anne Hathaway. And we can kind of... You now it's, it's, of course, decided to save right now as I'm trying to do something with it. That's typical. It auto-saves every 15 minutes. Uh, okay, and Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Um... Well, she played Willow. Oh, my. Hannigan. That's Allison Hannigan. I couldn't remember her name for a second there. Uh, that looks like... Uh, God, I know her name. Whatever. She's she's from Game of Thrones. Played Marjorie. I'm just... I'm blanking out, man. It's late in the day for this stuff. Anyways, some of it... Uh, like the lighting here is kind of weird. And it sort of blended into that... That piece of wood in the background. Yeah. Not so amazing on that. But that's kind of an unusual lighting condition. It may need more time, and I might need more source material potentially to work with lighting like that. But in general, that's a cat. Bless you. <laughs> uh, in general, though, you can see... Yeah, see here is another similar one with Keanu in that same kind of lighting, and it's, again, doing only so-so. So, again, if I wanted it to work with all lighting conditions, if there was, like, a destination video clip I was trying to work with and it had that kind of kind of dim greenish colored lighting I might try have to try to find something with Anne Hathaway from a similar lighting condition otherwise uh light color transfer modes might be required um you know in the training window to get it to fully learn that um but beyond that it seems to be working pretty well like I said just a couple with Keanu and that low greenish light that wasn't doing so good that one a second ago down here a second ago Daniel Craig kind of a dim orange light Blue light seems to be doing all right. Nick Cage, Jordan Peterson, Anna de Armas, Elon Musk. So you get the idea. So this is pretty good detail, though. The teeth are looking really good. The uh, the way she smiles and talks, it's like all upper teeth. I'd be kind of surprised if we get good definition in the lower ones just because of how she speaks. <laughs> this is random warp. I love looking at the random warp screen. You get all these funny googly faces. I want to cycle back around here and just see if there's any examples of the bottom teeth. See, again, this is all upper. All right, now see, this looks more like kind of like a white line where here there's some definition, so it's not got the bottom teeth super well learned yet. Here it shows more definition. So kind of iffy on the lower teeth, but there again, it's just because, uh, you know, of the way she talks generally tends to be this, you know, she gets her big choppers up there, but anyways, I'll go ahead and save this. Looks pretty good in general, though. And I'm going to shut off random warp, so we'll be running strictly uh, loading rate dropout. Uh, where the heck? Reload this. Which will take its sweet time. All right, we're going to come down and again, ignore a lot of these settings. This is again because I'm using a slightly different version of DeepFace Lab. It's called the um, the Machine Video Editor Fork. 
it's made by different people because deep Ace lab is open source and these guys added more options but most of the options uh some aren't really flushed out yet like it like um like floating point 16 doesn't work some of this other stuff doesn't work or doesn't really um isn't really needed and so i'm just using settings that you guys will have access to in the standard version so we, there shouldn't be any confusion so here's a random warp i'm gonna shut random warp off and everything else being left the same And it will load back up here. Load, load, load. Come on. What I plan to do after... I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but what I, what I plan to do after um, we get this one fully trained up is... I will probably take a different face set, like I think I mentioned, but I have one of uh, Data from Star Trek that I never really got around to doing a ton with, and I was thinking I could use that to show you guys how to basically flip these model files and use them for a different model, so we could turn Anne Hathaway into Data for our next, um, you know, like I say, our next usage of the same files. But that's going. We probably won't see a huge amount of sharpening, sharpening beyond this until we go to GAN, which is the final step. And even that, um, I mean, it looks like we're already getting a pretty good deal of detail out of her. But learning rate dropout, first of all, like when you have random warp enabled, if you try to do, um, and I know this is this is stuff that people who have DeFace Lab experience should kind of already know, but uh, when you go to merge the model, if you have random warp still on, you get what they call sub-pixel shake, which is kind of like this flickering effect and it like the the mask sort of seems to move around a little bit uh kind of clips in and out of the face sometimes because uh random warp was was still on when you shut that off and you leave it on learning rate dropout for oh i don't know 10 20 000 iterations or something uh that kind of solidifies it it uh you know it doesn't move around you don't get that shake anymore it gets rid of the clipping and you can see here already like we're starting to see the lost values drop just a little bit more the graph is dropped down from kind of this bigger wave to a sort of a tighter waveform and anyways i'll let this go overnight again at tomorrow by the time i look at this it should be somewhere around 650 670,000. at which point i'll probably go ahead and enable gan and we'll probably let it go until you know we'll let it go until it's done but that'll probably be in the ballpark of a million and so that might actually take a couple days tomorrow's friday so hopefully i can have this out like maybe sunday but it might be early next week before that's done and i'm really just talking to myself right now but anyways when the uh, video is ready it'll be ready but anyways i'll see you guys tomorrow Alrighty, it is now Friday afternoon, quarter after 6 p.m. And our model is at, where are we at? 617.503. It's like it's learned destination imagery pretty well, considering it's really not that. The 600,000 isn't, isn't a ton of iterations, but it's pretty good. And it's doing a fine job, thanks to those encoder and decoder files we gave it. Kenny. Yeah, it's up here again. So I'm going to go ahead and enable GAN here in a moment. Yeah, sorry, just Kitty showed up, want some attention. Pretty much when I get off work, he's been bored all day. Not surprising. Now, GAN is going to take longer to train because it slows down the iteration speed by about 200 milliseconds per iteration. So. Get this fired up here. And again, uh, you know what? Let me uh, restart that. I'm going to go ahead and turn on blur mask. Sorry about that. That's one thing um, that I think this could benefit from like a GUI instead of just doing it on the command line is if you could just do like radio buttons or something to turn something on or off and then have like text fields or something to allow you to enter in values for uh, numeric values or even just only let you select certain things like resolution, you know, like 128, 192, 
224, etc., or whatever options they want to give you, but none of this, uh, you know, like if you hit the wrong setting and hit enter by accident too soon, then it's like you got to close it out and come back and start over again. So, let me see. Let's skip blur mask this time. Blur out mask, turning that on. And now I'm going to find our GAN setting. Enable that at point one. Patch default is 40. Now the default DIMMS is 16. I'm going to do 32 because that's what Iperov is suggesting for the new, uh, you know, with the new RTT model set and the new, uh, you know, in his new instructions for training live models against his newer versions of the RTT model slash RTM face set. 32 is what he has in the, the recommendations. So I've just been starting to use that lately. I'm shutting this off. This isn't a setting that's in the normal deep face lab and I don't use it anyway. Gain level smoothing. So I'm just shutting that off. Everything else should be lock stock. So I'm going to let this load up here. And this won't be noticeable for a while. It usually takes, oh, I don't know. Let's just conservative estimate of like 20, 30,000 iterations before you'll start seeing it actually do something. You'll think that it's just like, oh, it must be done because it looks pretty good. But there's actually, uh, like I said, at a certain point, you'll start seeing these little kind of like stippling bumps and like grid-like patterns starting to appear on the faces. And that's when you know GAN is starting to work. And then that'll go for... However long it goes, I've had that going for almost a week on my Aliens video with uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and that still isn't done, so that should tell you how long GAN can take. I think it's largely due to the fact that that face set is extremely large. So, let's see. So, first off, like I said, the uh, before we were getting training speed of about 460, now it's 660. So, like I said, it went up by about 200 milliseconds per iteration. So it will take longer to achieve the same number of iterations. And like I say, it doesn't really look any different right now in the training window. But as time passes, that'll change. So when I check in on it tomorrow, for example, or if I came back later tonight or whatever, it'll probably at least start to display some of those GAN features. But I mean, really, it already looks pretty good. Like actually, the destination image uh, looks better than the source image already. Um, some of that is just from its... It's interpolating the image. So, like, her teeth look worse, but her eyes look better. There's, like, a pearlescence to teeth that this is... One of the ways I've noticed um, with deepfakes, you can tell if they're... Like, when you're watching a video, if it's not the real person, is the teeth and the tongue. Uh, the tongue will just kind of look like a textureless, pinkish-colored piece of meat. Like, it doesn't look like there's any texture to it. There's no gloss to it. Um, you know, like, somebody speaking should have, theoretically, their tongue should be kind of moist. Um, it will look like there's really kind of nothing going on there. And the teeth tend not to take on the full, you know, like I say, shine or pearlescence of real teeth. They kind of look like more like white chiclets. Um, you know, I think that's, depending on the resolution of the video and the lighting and everything, like it, it maybe is more noticeable or not so much, but I've never, I, I don't think they ever quite hit true realism with the tongue of the teeth yet and the lips tend not to necessarily get uh, and maybe this is like a lower resolution thing like maybe if i did one of these for a super extended period of time at like 512 or 640 resolution like maybe those things would be more prevalent or maybe i need higher dimensions or something but at least in the settings i've been doing it at that's like dead giveaway and when i've watched other people's uh deep fake videos you know i've noticed the same thing where like the teeth um you know, sometimes it's not so noticeable. Like here, it looks basically the same. Uh, here, it's very similar, but there is some some pearliness over here where you're not seeing it there. The tongue here has some, again, like some light reflectivity where it's not noticeable here. And when GAN's been going for a while, some of that will improve, but I just don't think that it ever truly 100% captures the original person on those tiny little details. That said... Uh, it's going to be going for a while. I'll check in on it tomorrow, and I'll just do probably a little quick little blurb about it at that point. But this will probably need to go for at least a couple days. Hopefully, it won't take a super long time, and then we can get this video uploaded. So, I will see you guys when I check in next time. Alrighty, we're at, uh, what, 721,000-ish?
iterations and GAN is definitely in full swing here. I'm going to try to find some examples. <laughs> it looks really funny on Trudeau because like the beard is sort of messing with it. And so it sort of thinks that his upper beard mustache area is kind of the upper lip. You can see how that sort of creates some weird translational problems. But um, the images aren't real big, so it's kind of hard to tell. But if you look around like the eyebrows, you can see there's kind of like this. There's like little dots or something or like little bumps, I guess, would be one way, one way to, to notice it. So Gan is kind of on there. Uh, let's see. And it comes and goes. So it's like you'll, you'll think it's done sometimes and it isn't. It's kind of hard to tell through here, but under the eyes, there's like a couple dots under each of her eyes. And then there's like this kind of a, I don't know, checkerboard slash grid pattern going on in her cheek. There's like some area here. The images are kind of small. Oh, there, there. This is obvious through here. Like this is really ganned out. You can see all this kind of, uh, kind of looks like tire tread marks or something across her face through there, all through here, pretty bit pretty good through there so this is uh like, let's see if we can see some of the source material kind of again the images are sort of small makes it sort of hard to tell um if like if i drop it down to two samples instead of three like it's a little bit bigger and somewhat easier to tell but in general um i wish there was some way to just make this a lot bigger there probably is somewhere in like the python code you could probably change the size of the, the sample windows which would help, but I don't know how to do that. Uh, I might ask somebody uh, in the Discord server and see if like somebody can explain to me how to go in there and modify that to change that. Because, like I say, when you're doing GAN, sometimes you think it's done because most of the images will look good, and then you go to try to merge it or try to make a DFM file, and you find that it really wasn't done uh, because the image here is too small to see the fine details. Just kind of looking. Yeah, you can see again around the eyebrows here, it's around here just above her eyes like in the like some of the makeup area some of the eye shadow like you can tell it's not smooth it's not sharp it looks like gan so anyways uh like i said this is 722,000. oh i have no idea when this will actually be done that's the problem with gan is it can go a short period of time and you and you reach your destination sometimes it takes several days um I did that Mary Elizabeth Winstead aliens video and that took like it never even finished. I ended up trying something else like using different GAN files from my M&M model and then suddenly that worked pretty quickly. So like GAN ran for better part of a week and didn't finish. So it's it's got a lot to do with like face set size. I think this face set I think is what like about 40,000 we said. Uh, the Mary Elizabeth Winstead is like 70,000. So yeah it makes sense that, that would take a long time for it to fully upgrade all the images, but it just takes a very long time sometimes. Anyways, uh, hopefully those examples were useful. I know that they're not, again, like it's kind of hard to see on, yeah, like here's one you can see pretty well, like uh, through the cheek area and the forehead here, there's kind of like this, kind of a tire tread pattern almost appearing on parts of her face. So, GAN is definitely working and it definitely isn't done yet. So I'll check on it again later today and then probably again tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be done by tomorrow so I can upload this video on Sunday. Uh, if not, it'll be done when it's done. So I'll be back in a little bit to check on it. So I'm uh, at about 850,000 iterations. I decided I wanted to try for the fun of it, uh, just seeing how high I could turn up the batch file on my uh, RTX a6000 and I was able to set it to at least I haven't tried higher but I went to 32 that's scan dims whatever but uh yeah set the batch up to 30 how the hell did it go yeah 30 32 batch size just to see if it'll have any kind of a beneficial impact on getting this done a little bit faster it's pretty close to being done like it seems like on the source images anyway um like the gist of the GAN artifacting and like grid patterns and stuff has largely ceased at least uh i've checked it a few times and i've sat here watching it for oh five ten minutes and it hasn't really been doing it so 
I think it's largely getting there. You can see in the loss graph here, like how wide the variance was before at a low, at batch eight. And as soon as I cranked it up to 32, it like it tightens that right up because it's losing a lot less per iteration. Let's see. Seems like there was still some GAN kind of stuff going on in some of the destination images. And I could probably export it at any time and at least test it because it might work just fine. Uh, it's probably just a couple of like extreme lighting conditions in some of these destination images that didn't work as well. I don't know, you know, uh, technically it should work in most use case scenarios, which is the purpose of training this this way against this big face set. But you figure um, most people who are going to use Deep Face Live and, uh, you know, to, to sit in front of their webcam with it are going to have some kind of stage lighting or like a, I've just got a lamp on in the room right now, but they'll have some kind of fairly uniform lighting situation going on. It's not going to be super dim, probably. It's not going to be, um, you know, like green or like deep, dark blue light or something weird like that. So it's going to be like a lamp or like I say, some kind of a, something made for like like a white light. Some of these are really funny looking with, with her on certain people. So now we got the same person twice, it's a different age range. Uh, Beal, she looks kind of comparable to Beal. That might be something good to use her on is find something with Jessica Beal in it. Like that movie with uh, Next with Nick Cage, I think Jessica Beal was in. Let's see. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit longer here. Look how tight that, that graph is getting since I turned up the batch size. This is because the, for those, let's see, you can see Gan is still not well applied here. Looks like a big bunch of road rash all over her face. But uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the RTX A6000, it is a 48 gigabyte workstation GPU that has comparable uh like a comparable number of CUDA cores and everything else to like an RTX 3090 uh but it uses standard GDDR6 memory instead of the GDDR6X that you get on a 3090 or a 3090Ti so the memory is slower but you have a lot more of it and so like the iteration speeds on this card aren't really that fast you can actually see at batch 32 it's like 2.2 seconds per iteration which may sound really slow and compared to what it was doing before it is but for that many uh, facial comparisons to be done per iteration. That's not a bad speed, but um, like I say, it's not even, it, it's actually a little bit slower than a 3090, and the 3090Ti is like, oh, well, probably 10% faster, roughly, at least, in terms of how fast it trains each iteration, but those cards don't have 48 gigs of memory, they have 24. So up to a certain point, like really, if you're doing a model like this, training it at batch 8 is really a waste of what the card can do, Turning it at like 16 or 32 like this, at least leverages the memory. Um, but for the, the vast, vast majority of people who are going to try this, I, I think, I don't know what like the percentage of people who own what card is, but I know most people didn't want to even blow the money on a 3090 because they're really, you know, for gaming, they're, the, the amount of memory is overkill for gaming and the prices were quite high. Uh, especially now they're kind of the opposite of that like now actually if you guys wanted to get into this and buy something like that a lot of the sites have been trying to dump those cards because they're getting ready for the 4000 series and they're trying to get rid of all the inventory they have left of the rtx 3000 stuff and people aren't buying it because they're waiting for uh well there's a lot of reasons like the, the the market's flooded with crypto uh people you know cards people are using to train cryptocurrencies and uh, just generally, there's a there's an overabundance of cards in the market now versus before, which was the opposite of that. And so now the prices have kind of gone and done a complete 180, whereas before they were getting pretty ridiculously expensive. Like, I mean, you were talking about like two grand plus for like 3090s for a while there, and now they're like, some of them are as low as like under, you know, under 1100 bucks. And like sometimes you can get a 3090 Ti for like 11 to $1,300 from EVGA on right on their site and they're bundling it even sometimes with like power supplies or other stuff to even give you a bit of better of a deal and they're still not selling them out because people are waiting for the 4000 and or they don't need cards because they can get cheap used stuff like if you go on facebook market or if you go on um like craigslist or any any kind of a want ad kind of place right now you can see um 
like there's an excess of cards available and i mean some of the cards i've seen up there for a long time and no one's buying them i had to briefly try to list some of my stuff at one point when i thought that the 4000 series was coming a little bit sooner and uh i mean i wasn't even getting any offers really so the market is kind of squirrely right now but yeah like i say screwing around with this at a little bit higher batch if you can do so gets those loss values down it's really not necessary i mean you can train it at batch four and still get the job done it just depends on how long you're willing to wait like that's why when people ask how many iterations it takes to do something it's a meaningless number really because you could train at batch two and get like a million iterations and do far less work than if you did batch you know 16 and a million iterations so like I said, the number of iterations, and there's no like specific number. And people ask me a lot of the time in like Discord, or I see this question posted, like, how many iterations do I need for GAN to finish? And it's like, I don't know. When is it'll be done when it's done? You know, and people don't like that answer, but that's the answer is just watch it, and when it looks done, that's when it's done. Um, you know, maybe it takes a couple of days. Sometimes it takes a week. You know, it depends on a lot of factors, like we mentioned, like the size of your face set and all these different things. Um, this is starting to look pretty good. I think that's uh what is that that's jessica alba i don't know who this is that's paul walker of course funny seeing you know that's too bad about paul walker uh he died here years ago in a car accident but kind of funny seeing some of these faces on him i think that's ivanka that's uh the gal from stranger things natalie i think is her name something like that Anyways, I'll let this go a little bit longer, and maybe a little bit later this afternoon it'll be done, and we can do a test of the, the live model, and then I can show you guys how to recycle the files from this model, and I've got like a face set for data from Star Trek, I was thinking uh, I'll roll it over into that, and we can watch how quickly that picks up and starts learning the new model with data. So anyways, I'll be back here in a little bit. Up, guys it is now monday on the 29th at like 6 22 p.m and there's still some areas of this where it looks like gan isn't quite done yet but it's getting pretty close and you can see pretty good detail in the transfer here on pretty much everything looks like we didn't really get i don't know if i don't have a good angle or this might be a bad alignment or this might be a bad alignment but just in general. It's hard to find people doing like head tilted back stuff like this and have it look decent. But so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and give this a test as a deep face live model here in a second and just see how it works. Uh, I think it's probably pretty close. I know I'm not quite at 900,000 yet, but bear in mind that it's been running at about 21, you know, 2.1 seconds per iteration since we switched to batch 32. Otherwise we'd be at like 1.1, 1.2 million iterations at the previous batch size so just keep that in mind we're not really uh you know the iteration count like i said isn't that relevant so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to export i always seem to struggle to find this there export saehd as dfm i'm probably gonna have to stop recording briefly while i do this because this like just wrecks the cpu and like you can't do two things at once with it. So you're going to select your model and it's going to ask you if you want to do quantized or not. Tell it no. It's no by default. I don't know what, what the deal is. I don't know what quantizing means, uh, but when you select yes, you tend to get like this weird cloudy swirling mass of colors in, deep, in the DeepFace Live application and it doesn't end up working. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording for a second while I export this and I'll be right back. All right, you can see it is now said it finished dumping the file, press any key to continue. So it spits out the DFM file into your model folder. So I'll go into model and find, so it's uh, just the, the same name as your model files, .dfm. And I'm gonna change this name to Anne Hathaway 320 because it's 320 resolution. It's just whatever you wanna name it. And I'm going to open up DeepFace. That's the wrong folder. Sorry. Uh, DeepFace Live. Here we go. Go into user data, DFM models. And I'm going to copy that over into that folder. 
and I'm going to go ahead and load up DeepFace Live here in a second, and we'll see how it looks. Give me one second while I load that up. Alrighty, I've got it loaded back up here, and you can see it's working. Um, <clears throat> the problem it's having is this. Like there's like minor detail in the bottom teeth, but not a lot. And she also looks mad all the time, which is kind of strange. Um, well, not all the time. Like if I like force myself to look happy, then Anne looks happy-ish. But it just seems like, oddly enough, she kind of looks irritated all the time. Like, looks sad. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Uh, I don't know. It's just something to do with the way it's reading my face, I guess. Um, but you can see, I don't think GAN is 100% done, but it's pretty close to being where you'd want it to be at. Uh, I wish I had some different light. I need to get different light sources in here one of these days. Or I could test this out like on that Unreal um, uh, MetaHuman creator. And use the different lighting sources and see you know how much difference it looks but the eyes look really pretty good big and kind of you know big brown eyes and the upper teeth are really well defined it's just the bottom teeth but like she almost doesn't show them and i don't know why she kind of looks like she's biting her lip or angry all the time like hmm <laughs> anyways um it is working like i say it's just uh you can see on the eyebrows a little bit maybe you can maybe you can't but there's like other side uh, a little bit of the gan gan effect going around the uh the eyebrows a little bit there very minor uh, probably wouldn't notice it most people probably would just think it's just not super sharpened up on detail yet let me try sharpening this a little further the more i sharpen it i think the more it gets to be a little bit more evident Anyways, uh, I don't think it looks that bad. It's just, like I say, the bottom teeth seem to be a problem. This is the same problem I had with that Hide the Pain Herald guy. The way certain people talk, some people are the opposite of that. Like, I'm screwing around with uh, the actor Mike... Uh, what is Jonathan Banks is the name of the actor, but Mike Ehrmantraut from Breaking Bad, and he's the reverse, and talks like this kind of time with his lower teeth. Um, you rarely ever see his upper teeth, and Patrick Stewart's kind of like that, too. Um, it's just people's way their jaw is aligned or whatever the heck it is they talk one way or another anyways i'm gonna call this done because i don't want to make this video take forever to produce and this is close enough to a finalized product i might continue to train a little bit after i put this video out just to see if i can get it to straighten up a little bit more and maybe get a little bit more definition out of those teeth maybe another day or two and it might improve that a bit more but it just seems like uh i probably need more source material of than hathaway if i could find some like in a Google image search where she's doing like a full on, you know, toothy grin, give it enough examples of that and let it train a bit longer. It would probably correct itself, but it just, it doesn't have very many examples. Whenever you see her smile, it's just, it's just the upper teeth. Like she's got this, like even when she's in the middle of a discussion and she's talking. Now you can see actually, uh, the, like the lines below my eyes, they have kind of a, like a little dotted effect. That's Gan not being quite 100% done. Like I said, so this will be, this will be something uh, I'll probably train a little bit further before I actually lo upload this DFM file to the Google Drive. But we're going to consider it, like I say, done for the sake of this video. And in a second here, I'm going to show you guys how to recycle model files so I can take Anne Hathaway's model and turn it into anybody else I want in seconds. It's far, well, I say seconds, but... You have to have a face set. You have to have everything staged and ready to go. But you can use the model files quite quickly and have a, a new model up and running a lot faster than if you start from scratch. Even faster than just doing the trick that we did with this one, which is the RTT encoder and, and, and decoder. Uh, you can, like I say, much more rapidly start another model. So give me a second. I'm going to close out DF Live, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that process, and then we'll call this good. So stand by. All right, so I've got my uh, Anne Hathaway model files here on the left. And on the right-hand side, I've got like the main set of folders for DeepFace Lab again. I've got a destination with the RTM face set here. I've got my source face set pack for data from Star Trek TNG. 
and I've got a blank model folder. Now I want us to use all of this except for the enter A to B file, which I think we discussed earlier in the video, but basically we want it to forget its source, which is A, but remember everything it knows about B. So B we want to keep. B is basically what it learned when it trained against the RTM face set. And so we're going to go ahead and save or copy over all of these files to this other folder here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start training it as if it were basically picking up from where the other one left off, except for I have to change some settings because it has to learn data. And so we need to have random warp enabled. So we're going to go ahead and go back in here. I'll drop this down to two just so the images are a little bit larger. Flip source on, destination off. I'll set this down to like 16 instead just so it trains a little faster iteration speed for the sake of what we're going to be doing here. Let's see. I think I have enough side profile images of data. I'll leave that off. Doesn't really matter for the sake of this demo anyway. All right, limiting rate dropout off, random warp back on. And don't worry about that. Like this isn't gonna hurt Anne Hathaway at all because she's over in her own set of folders. Anne's in here, data's in here. So anything I do with this model is a copy of the original files. I can go back and continue training Anne at any time it won't have lost anything. It's just that this will now be where the starting point for data. So everything else should be as I had it. It shouldn't take it too long to load up on ye old thread ripper. Not a huge face out of data, but 12,405 is more than enough. And again, we're just demoing here this, this concept or anything else. And that's the thing about this, like I say, you don't have to create a new model file. You don't have to copy in the RTT encoder and decoder again, any of that stuff. This is all the same files we already had. It's all staged for us. It knows everything it already knew. We're just going to give it, let it learn a new source. Which is loading, come now. All right, so data is loaded up. And... The first thing we'll notice here is like these are the destination images, right? Now it's a little funky initially, but it will quickly recover the destination stuff. You can just watch the graph, the yellow graph as the yellow graph comes down, but this is already way more just in a couple seconds. You can make out shapes and whatnot that uh, previously would have taken probably an hour to get some definition on. So those are the destination images, and I'm going to cycle back around to data, and that's going to take a few minutes, but you can see it's got the general shape started here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, let it train here for a little while. It is now 642. Maybe we'll come back around 7 o'clock and uh, see what it looks like. So I'll be back here in a short while. Already is now 7 p.m. So it's been going for what about 15 minutes? Not quite 15 minutes because it hasn't auto saved yet. And you can see this is the source material. And look how well it's already in, in, like I say, about 15 minutes. Not quite 15 minutes. It is largely, I mean, I don't want to say like it's learned the source that well, but it's pretty good for 15 minutes. Like it's got a ways to go. It's got a, some angles that it seems to know better than others. But as you can see, it's all, you know, you can tell who it is. And the destination images, you can see it's already, as evidenced by the destination uh, graph, loss graph, is coming down. It knows the destination images pretty well already. And you can kind of see here how data looks on some of these people already with some fairly... I mean, you can tell it, it knows what to do. It's got a ways to go, and some of this stuff, it works better than others, like the lighting conditions here, and, you know, a dark-skinned individual, it might take more time to, to uh, you know, adapt to that. Obviously, it's, again, only been going a short while. 
<laughs> he like, makes pretty good Paul Walker. Interesting. There's a lot of stuff that I think he'd be kind of cool, and he'd probably look good on Elon Musk. You know, people have put him on Mark Zuckerberg before. But anyways, you get the idea. This is very early going, and the more you do this, the better it gets. So again, this one is not quite 900,000 iterations. Again, a lot of that was, some of that was trained at the uh, batch 32, but the majority of that was trained at batch 8. And so, uh, you know, really, it, it's it's been a, a fairly appropriate iteration count to, to go by. Um, like the Mary Elizabeth Winstead model is about 3 million. And so you figure as this model progresses and learns more and more and more and more, the, the next source character I give it, it will learn faster. And then, you know, just this kind of becomes an exponential learning I don't know. I'm sure there's a point where it's going to get to, uh, you know, where it's not going to get any faster or it'll be, you know, kind of diminishing returns on those gains, but you get the idea. So hopefully this has been useful to you guys. Tell you what, I'm going to kill it here for a second and then I'm going to kind of recap and then I'll call the, the video good at this point. So stand by. All right, so this is, um, I've copied over from one of the different folders that I already had, and I've made this a while back, but it's it's Terminator 3 uh, with Kristana Locken as the female Terminator. And so this is one that we can do like a, a merge test on. I've done no training on it with Anne Hathaway whatsoever. We'll see what it can do. Uh, I'm not going to run through the whole thing. And in fact, like I'm only going to do a couple clips that hopefully won't get me copyright nailed. Uh, when I up, when I upload this, if it gives me any crap, I might have to take this section back out or blur it or something. So hopefully not. Uh, interactive merger. So that's going to load here for a moment. And when it comes back up here, I will go ahead and we'll have a look at that merger process and just do a couple frames. Like I'll get somewhere into it and you can kind of see still image one or two frames in a row where, uh, you know, Hathaway will be superimposed onto uh, Kristana Locken's character, and it should let us basically act as if we had already trained up that model on this destination, even though we didn't. So give me one second here. All right, see, like, I'm not going to do any kind of animation here. This is a still frame, single image. Couldn't get me in any kind of trouble with... Uh, with the fine folks at, uh, you know, YouTube and copyright check. But anyways, you can see here, I mean, I did do like some setting changes within the merger program to just kind of blend it into their face a little bit, but you always do that. But as far as the way it looks, um, I mean, it looks like I trained it against its destination and that it's pretty much ready to go, right? Um, I mean, again, I want GAN to go a little bit longer, etc. Like nitpicking, yes, like it needs more time. And then again, the problem with her lower teeth needs to be rectified by probably figuring out uh, what the heck is going on with you know my source library and get some more pictures of her bottom teeth so it can learn those a little bit better but just in general you can see that with no with no additional training time a RTM trained model means ready to merge which means it's ready to go on to any destination footage that's why it works in DeepFace Live because it knows enough people that it knows you so you teach it enough people, you can import it onto any clip or use it in DeepFace Live successfully with minimal additional effort. Um, some scenes are more complicated than others. So that's why I like with Aliens, for example, even though I had already, like when I started training against that, I was already at like 2.2 .2 million or something on Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And I still had to train the crap out of it for quite a while to get it to learn certain things like the, the room with the eggs where she's got the flamethrower going and there's like this, it starts off and it's kind of like this bluest mist and fog going in front of her face. Like partial obscure obscuration of the face with, uh, like I so said, with fog or with lighting effects or rain or anything like that or reflections. Like I found when people are driving a car and there's like uh, reflectivity on the windshield and the person you're trying to deep fake is behind all that, you, like you get this weird effect because the mask is laying over that. So it's like the shadow just going under the mask and through the face, and you get kind of weird aberrant crap. Um, it doesn't always work that well. 
So you kind of have to be choosy sometimes about the destination footage you're using, or sometimes you can correct for some of that with X segging, but just realistically, some things don't work that well. But that said, this is the demonstration, like I say, of an RTM trained model instantly applied to a video clip and getting, you know, acceptable results. So that said, if anybody has any questions, which I'm sure there will be some, please ask them in the comment section below. Um, I've got a PayPal tip jar that I've created. Uh, I was trying to do something with Subscribestar, and I was having trouble figuring out how to get that um, set up, like a tip jar set up on their site so I could accept donations. If anybody would like to donate, I appreciate it. I do put quite a bit of time and effort into these things, and my electric bill is kind of high because uh, between running three high-end desktops and then having to keep the place cool with air conditioning, you know, uh, this is not an industrial facility, this is my home, and the temperature in here, uh, without the AC going pretty consistently this time of year, is pretty hot. During the winter, it's fine, like, it'll keep the place kind of warm, and I don't have to run the heater that way. It's actually kind of beneficial in the winter, but in the summer, um, you know, not so great. So, that said, uh, I hope you guys found this useful. Ask comments in the comment section. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And like I said, leave comments. Uh, maybe share the video if you think other people can find this information useful. Um, I got nothing else. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys again real soon. Take care.